Okay, we are live again. Thank you guys for your patience. We are so sorry for the technical difficulties. That was my internet um, going down. We haven't had that issue before on our live streams, but these days you never know uh, <laughs> with all the stuff going on in the world. So thank you for your patience. We are excited to be here today with Bev and Michael Solatino. And did I got that right, Michael? Great job. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank Great you. Job. And and we are super excited to kind of have a two-part live stream here. We're going to focus the first part on an interview with Michael and um, kind of a Q&A session talking about West Group, its history, um, the unique philosophy that West Group has on customer service, you know, kind of how you're, they've been handling, you know, the pandemic and and how they're supporting their customers, you know, the eye care professionals across the country, and you know, kind of looking at the mission of the company um, as a whole. And I really, you know, as as an editor in this industry for a very long time, um, I really appreciate West Group as a company. You know, we we have a wonderful relationship with them and really love the product that comes out of there. And we just used some of your product for our fashion shoot that we did uh, last week. So thank you for that. And Bev is going to share with us for the second half of our live stream here. She's going to share some information about the product at, at West Group, but she's also going to dive into, she has a fantastic PowerPoint of trends pre, um, presentation prepared for us to look at kind of the most enticing eyewear trends for 2021, um, you know, specifically kind of looking at, at what's happening now um, in the upcoming season. So we're excited for that part too, so stay tuned. We also, folks, I would love anyone that's watching here, please feel free to type in your name, your business name, or your practice name into the sidebar here, into the um, comment bars in Facebook or in YouTube. We'd love to know who's here, who's watching, where Oh no, oh, you're no. frozen again. Again. Wow, we're, it must be all the cold weather that's happening across the states. Oh, it must be. You're from no. Yes. You're okay, you're back. Am I am I back? You're, you're back. back. Okay. You're back. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, good. Well, you guys, if I glitch out. I'm going to I'm going to um hang in there and and I'll probably just be back. I think there we don't usually have any internet issues here, but we are not that far from Texas and from those southern states that are having all those problems. So who knows um what's going on out there, it's, you know, for those folks uh tough times for sure. So anyway, well thank you again Bev and Michael for joining us and thanks to our audience. If you guys would like more information, um, feel free to look into the comment bar there. There's um, the West Group URL there to click on for more info, and you can check out some of the the awesome frames that they have there too. And we'll I'll give a quick shout out. We have Sue Corbett here from Prevent Blindness in Chicago has typed in. So welcome, Sue. Thanks for joining us. So um, Michael, we know you know your company has such a rich history. You're a second generation leader in Canada's optical industry. You're a Montreal native. So West Group is, is based in Montreal, which we hope to get up to visit you in when it's not so cold. And, uh, you know, we know that your company has been in business for, you know, almost 60 years and sure. what a legacy for sure. Can you tell us a little bit about kind of the background and the history of the company and, and how you and Bev, you know, kind of have come to, to where you're at today with West Group. Absolutely, Erin. First of all, thank you. And thank you for I Care Business for having us here uh, and for hosting. This is a, a great, a great uh, experience for us. Um, first of all, we are getting close to 60 years. We, uh, my father Rodney, or our father Rodney, started the business in 1961. Uh, he started with the, the true idea of being a distributor and in, an importer, and he brought in frames from the U.S. Uh, right away for, uh, in 1961. Uh, after a period of time, maybe three, four years, he decided that he needed frames that are a little bit different. He went out to France and then later on out to Japan. So by the end of the 60s, early 70s, he was importing frames from Japan and France. 
Um, and we were really just concentrating in Canada, or he was just concentrating in Canada. Uh, and we were, you know, he made a decision to support and to direct all the business to independent eye care. So our company has been built on independent eye care professionals for all these years. We really rely on them uh, and we dedicate all our efforts to the independents. Um, I joined the company in 1990, Bev joined the company in 1994, and he felt in order for us to really learn the business, we needed to go sell. So right away, we, we, we took the bags. Uh, Bev was living in Toronto. I was living in Montreal. And it was go sell. Your full-time wow. job is to go sell. And we both carried the bags. I carried the bags for 15 years before wow. I had any type of responsibility. Uh, Bev still carries the bags to a few customers just to stay in touch with the direct um, feel of what's happening in the industry and to feel you know direct comments of, of the product. But our father felt that in order for us to really learn and how to run an organization where the real blood and the, the whole identity of the of, of the business is working with the ECPs. And there was only one way to learn how to sell, to learn how to listen, and to, to become a professional, and that's to go sell, right? So that's pretty we, amazing. We, it, it was a great experience. And, uh, you know, my daughter just joined last month. And the first thing I said was, you're moving to Toronto. We have an open territory. Go sell. Wow. And that's all. She she has a full-time territory, and that's what she's doing. Fantastic. And, you know, and, you know for, for close to 40 years, we were a Canadian business. And in 2004, uh, Bev and I and, and, uh, and our dad said, you know, let's look at the market. How can we grow? And we decided we, we we already launched Click Denmark. We decided to take Click to Europe. So we went to Somo for the first time in 2004. Mm -hmm. And that's how we started our export business. And after the first show, we had nine countries distributing. Click, wow. Right. And it was a really, really exciting time. The business changed. Our business changed tremendously. And then we had the courage to come down to the U.S. And we found two fantastic distributors in 2006, 2007. And that's how we launched Click and Fish mm. into the U.S. market was through two distributors. And wow. we worked with them and they were, they were wonderful. And we worked with them for many years until we decided that we needed a little bit more control. And by the end of 2016 or the middle of 2016, that's when we um, went direct. And we hired a sales force. We opened up West Group USA. We opened up a, a distribution center in Plattsburgh, New York. Uh, and we felt it was really necessary to control our destiny and to really understand what people want is we could translate it to our salespeople. And we could say, this is how we would like to work. This is how our product is going to get delivered. And we went from there. And that's pretty much where we have taken it. It's been six years, six, seven years already that we're direct. Wow. And today we're standing with 76 salespeople in North America. We have 56 down in the US and 20 here in Canada. And we have a wonderful team of sales managers and VPs that take care of uh, North America. It's just been a, a wonderful, wonderful experience. So that's 60 years wrapped up really quickly. <laughs> That's a pretty amazing story and really inspiring to hear. And I, even I did not know some of that history back there. So that is really great. Thanks for sharing that with us. And I know that West Group has a really unique philosophy on customer service. Obviously, your focus is the independent eye care professional. So kind of how, you know, is this customer service philosophy? Can you tell us a little bit about it? And how is that played out in the day to day with your eye care professional clients? Well, first and foremost, we need to be a business partner with the ECPs. It's not about selling as many frames as possible. It's selling the right frames to help them grow their business. That is, you know, the lead line that we use within our customer service team, within our sales team, with within the whole organization. It's not about selling more frames. It's selling the right amount of frames to help people succeed. 
On top of that, what we try and do is we try and make life easy. We want to be easy to work with. We're not very complicated. We're there to support the needs of the eye care professional. And that's, you know, whether it's a live person on the telephone, um, you know, we, we, I think we, we pick up 99.6% of calls right on the first ring. We have 20 wow. people answering the phones, um, you know, so it's all about how to work with the eye care professionals. If they want to work with an iPad with our sales reps, they could work with the iPad. If they want to see samples, we have samples. There is no shortcuts. We work how each individual store wants to work. That's pretty amazing. So it's really customized service, customized customer service, you know, yeah. for however it works best for the customer, which mm -hmm. is pretty incredible and pretty impressive that you have all those folks answering the phone. I mean, who can get anybody on the phone these days when you have a question? So that's like, wow, that's that's a huge um, asset, you know, for, for your clients for sure. So, you know, kind of why is this mission, you know, that you that West Group has as a company focused on serving the independent eye care professional, you know, even more critical today in today's very unique and challenging world, you know, they're going through so much right now as practices and businesses and dealing with so many things, you know, kind of why is that your mission even more important as an asset for them? Well, I think we have to think of our legacy and where we have come from. I think it is vital to continue the legacy that uh, our father started was helping the independent uh, practitioner. Now, there are many uh, groups and very large groups that are doctor run. And these this is fantastic for us. We just, you know, the mass retailer is just not a place for us. We don't have product for them. So for us, it's it's about maintaining our legacy moving forward with our legacy and also you said it everybody's get being automated everybody's being outsourced telephone calls are going out to third parties it's a third country like it, it it's just we just we're a family corporate business and we understand what we need to do to continue the evolution of our business and our legacy I love it. It's and and that is such a great thing for the independent today because so many of them are, you know, entrepreneurial, independent, right. family-run businesses as well. So no doubt that is seen as a you know really incredible asset um, to work with you guys. So you know, kind of you know, obviously we're all going through this pandemic together as an industry, you know, companies and the eye care professionals you know, kind of how have you as a company adapted during the COVID-19 crisis to assist your eye care, independent eye care clients? Well, I, I think, you know, we've done what most companies have done. You know, we, 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 we make sure our frames are sterilized. Any delivery that we get into the building sits for 24 hours to make sure everything, whatever is, is has to get wiped down. You know, we do all the regular, um, uh, protocols for COVID. You know, we have everybody working from home who can work from home. Uh, and whoever is in the office, they're wearing masks, they're doing temperature check. But more importantly, I, I think what's important is how our team has worked through this horrible time, right? Because if we look back in March, April, May, this was all scary for everybody. Right. And it really, you know, we're so proud of the West Group family and how they took it upon themselves to work from home to do what was necessary. And it really reinforced what our family and what our culture is about here at West Group. It is truly amazing. You know, when we had to make difficult decisions and, you know, Bev and I struggled during March and April where we were we were nervous. We were we sure. no what when we could come out of it when we could open up and we had to make some really really difficult decision in terms of furloughing people and yet everybody within the organization one understood two understood that it was really important for west group when we could open back up that we're strong and not That's only are we strong but we could thrive and move forward so everybody whether it was 
from a customer service person, a warehouse person, our salespeople, they stayed committed, even when we had to make terrible decisions and very difficult decisions. And then when we brought everybody back, it's like we didn't even miss a step. It was truly inspiring on how our family and our group stuck together and did what needed to be done for the survival and for everybody. Right. For the greater for the greater good, it's it's very impressive. But I think it's a testament to the community and the culture and the family that you know you folks have created at West Group for sure. Thank you. Yes. So well, thank you for all of that insight, Michael. I feel like I have you know a million more questions for you because it's it's just uh, kind of scraping the surface here of, yeah. of how you know incredible West Group really is. But I appreciate knowing more about the history and the mission and the DNA of, of West Group. And we're gonna now um, shift to a couple of questions for Bev. So thank you, Bev, for joining us. Before we do that, I'm just gonna give a super couple of quick shout outs because we got a lot of folks on here tuned in. Um, clearly our technical difficulties, I don't know, thank you guys all for <laughs> staying patient and tuning back in because everybody uh, kind of came back. So. We've got um, Beth Hickey Devlin, Janine Roy from West Group, Anne Marie Moreland, Gail Wade Bennett, Heather Motzinger Rawls, Shana 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 uh, Latiolas. Sorry, Shana, I probably just butchered that. But thank you guys all for joining us. It's really exciting to see so many folks here from a variety of different places. So. So Bev, you know, kind of, you know, looking on the product side, how would you describe West Group's DNA when it comes to eyewear and sunwear? And what are kind of your key brands? And we did talk a little bit about Click, um, but what are some of the key brands and how do those serve the clients? So just kind of if you could describe the DNA, you know, kind of, of the brands and what are the brands? Going back to sort of what what Michael had had said during during the um, your conversation on the evolution of our company. And, and I think um, for the longest time, we were just distributors in Canada. And in 2004, we, we seriously started looking at our stable of brands and feeling that we needed more control. Um, at that time, I was a full-time rep and I did some of the buying for our products. And I think being out in the road and hearing from my customers and and other customers in different areas, we were really able to identify holes in the market that no one was servicing from a product perspective. Um, and in 2004, that was the time, that was sort of the era when frames started to become larger. And there were, a lot of ECPs were having a hard time finding frames for narrow fit consumers. And that was how we came up with the key DNA for Click. Um, at that time as well, Scandinavian design became more and more important and more popular. Um, so that organic growth of our first brands and creating something that fit the needs and the holes in the market at that point allowed us to get a really firm and concrete idea of the mission of Click and the aesthetic of Click. And because it was so focused on solving an issue, we were able to maintain that DNA. You know, we're looking, Click was developed in 2004. We're going on to 2021. And for, for wow. a brand to stay relevant for all that, of these almost years, 20 years and you know the design has evolved based on trends but the core dna of being clean modern aesthetic for the narrow fit consumer has stayed true and our other brands uh fish for women and avatic for men were born from click uh, when we first developed click we really focused on color and european design and click became very popular right from the get-go but as due to the popularity, we were getting a lot of requests for similar type of design, i.e. lots of color, lots of detail, a little bit more European styling, but larger sizes. And rather than diluting the DNA of click, 
we decided to create a women's collection fish that focused on color and detailing and European design that was a little, not a little bit, was quite different than brand, from branded product and, and the aesthetic of branded product. Um, and that's how fish was born. And Avatic, originally fish had men and women's styling within it, but as men were a little less confident when it came to color, there was a disconnect between the look of fish men and, and ladies models. So rather than again, diluting the DNA of a brand, we separated men's out, kept uh, fish for women, um, really uh, focused on, on bringing the fashion trends into eyewear for fish out of more than, you know, more so than any other collection. And Avatic focusing on tech, changing technology in materials, looking for the newest hinges because men um, are interested in clean design, a little bit of color, but they're really, really interested in the technical aspects of things. So right. we were really able to um, separate the DNA, make each collection um, compatible with each other. There was very little overlap. And because, because one of the things that I found as a rep, there was nothing more frustrating to an ECP is sitting in a one to two hour presentation with a rep and basically looking at the same product over and over, but with de different demo lenses. So for us, it was very important that our products and our brands complemented each other and didn't compete. And there was a reason why the ECP would carry Click Fish and Avatic. Um, the fourth, our fourth key collection is Superflex, which is our lifestyle collection, um, affordable uh, price point, but very deep in styling and sizes. So within Superflex, you know, you can get kids, you can get mature ladies, mature men's, teens, fashion forward, a little bit of everything um, at an affordable uh, price point. Um, we all, we focus so much on design across all of our collections because it's very important to us that regardless of the price point that a consumer can afford should not dictate the aesthetics of the frames that they can wear. That is a wonderful philosophy, and and you have such fantastic design. We just love, you'll love the fashion sh uh, shot that we did last week. It's running in our March issue, and and but the frame is so gorgeous, and it's a fish, and it's kind of a geometric uh, style, and just really beautiful acetate, great colors. So clearly, you put a lot of you know passion into the design process. That, that is definitely clear to us and we work with your product quite a bit. So kind of how would you, Bev, explain the company's philosophy on quality in its frame products? Because they're definitely, you can really feel the quality in your products as well as obviously see the design and the style. I, I think for us quality, th this was the importance of, of providing a quality product regardless of the price point. I think is something that our father instilled in us. And, and one of the key things that he always said is that you're always as good as your last product. Um, and you can come out with hundreds of great uh, pieces that look great, that stand up, and you have that one frame that has a problem. That's what people remember. And it's the same thing for the retailers. For us, we understand that... Um, consumers judge a retailer based on the product that they bought. So if they have a problem with their frame, they don't automatically think, well, it's the manufacturer who, who caused my issue. It's the frame that I bought at the retailer that I had the problem with. So for us, ensuring that uh, quality is as important, if not more so than the aesthetic, is always top of mind when the design team is sourcing the components, uh, looking at the structure of the design. Uh, before our products are shipped out, we go through very, uh, very rigorous QC testing, both at the factory level and once they hit Montreal or Plattsburgh warehouse. 
So there are probably three or four different QC checks above and beyond what the factory themselves do. We have our own QC uh, team in uh, the various countries where we produce doing a final QC check before the products are shipped to North America. And then we go through uh, additional QC checks once they land here to ensure that any issues that were spotted during our QC uh, in, in the in the at the factory have been solved and fixed before it ships to us. So you know we Amazing. we take what we put out very seriously. Um, both um, we we want our customers to be happy, we want consumers to be happy, and we want our sales reps to be happy. You know they're there to service their customers, and the last thing we want is for them to spend you know an inordinate amount of time trying to fix problems. Right. For sure. Well, the quality is is quite evident, and that's great to see, you know, to hear about kind of, and that's pretty amazing, all those QC checks. It sounds like a lot mm -hmm. along the way, and, you know, folks can really feel confident, you know, in the quality of the frame that they're selling to their patients, you know, for sure. So, all right, well, we're, we're super excited to see some of these trends that you've got on tap for us, Bev. Um, I know they're kind of focused on 2021. Is it is it spring uh, 2021, or is it kind of just looking at for the whole year what's on tap for the? I, I think it's it's a mixture. Um, we're okay. going to be I'm going to be dividing the trend presentation into three different areas: the key shapes, which I think are are more of 2021 trends. These are shapes that that the ECP and consumers are going to see um, throughout the year. Uh, trending colors, which are a little bit more seasonal, but again, the, the eyewear, I always like to say eyewear uh, trends evolve. They don't change because most consumers uh, buy a pair of glasses and expect them to be stylish for a couple of years. And, and you know, at the end of the day, we're, we're, we're designers are dealing with a very small canvas. You have a front and you have temples. It's not like hems go up and down. Right. Pants you know, pant legs get wide and narrow. There's just so much you can do. And and, and I think due to the cost and, and the fact, you know, it's a sizable investment for most consumers. I think most designers are very cognizant of that. And, and we look at the trends and we evolve to freshen it up, but not to make people feel like they just spent $400 or $200 on a pair of glasses and within, you know, six months they're out of style. So right. I like to say they evolve. So with that, colors are seasonal, but again, you'll see you'll see those colors launch throughout the year and the design details again, although uh, we put it as spring, summer 2021, I think those details also will carry out throughout the year. Great, oh, well, that's awesome. So that thank you for explaining that. So I think we're gonna um, pull up our uh, PowerPoint now. Yep and and roll through that so bev I'll, I'll let you take it from here perfect i think if we can move to the eyewear shape trend slide perfect there it um, is with spring summer 2021 eyewear trends are all about vintage vibes the 70s continue to influence fashion as well as eyewear trends particularly when it comes to shapes the versatility and acceptance of these throwback uh, shapes is evident in that they are popping up in eyewear collections at every price point. Can move to the next slide, please. The first shape is the retro square. This shape began trending in 2019 and continues to stay strong into 2021. The shape is extremely, extremely versatile. It'll work for both men and women, and it's a great shape for both optical and sun styling. Additionally, and most importantly, it also works great for metals as well as plastic material. The next shape is the 70s hexagon. Um, this came to the forefront again last year and we're seeing it continue into 2021. It evolved from the oversized round and this angular shape looks great when it's clean and simple like the Superflex 561 or elevated by layering of materials, applying intricate detailing. Can we go back, please? And thank you. Applying intricate detailing or changing it up by introducing semi-rimless constructions. It's a really great shape that designers are playing around with 
now that we've seen a bit more of the uptake, a bit more popularity, um, you look through any trade magazine, you walk down the street, all different ages are wearing the hexagon. And I think as we've seen it um, sort of trend from 2019 into 2020, into 2021, I think designers are taking a little bit more liberties to jazz it up and evolve it because women seem to love this shape. The and you know, Bev, I don't know if you're watching any of the fashion shows right now. The New York Fashion Week yep. is on and, and a lot of 70s, a lot of disco, a lot of 70s yep. uh, in those shows. So the, it's going to be on trend, yeah, for quite some time, seems. Yes, yeah, 70s, honestly, were is a great era um, for fashion and eyewear. And I think I, you see a lot of similarities between the 70s and the era we're in. Um, you see a move towards a more natural um, aesthetic, a, a cool aesthetic, much more streamlined, less fussy. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of those trends are translating, albeit they're being updated and made a little bit more modern, but they're translating really well, particularly uh, with eyewear shapes. Um, the third yeah. shape. Um, that we're that we're seeing trending is subtle changes in round shapes continue to gain traction as consumers look for new variations of this classic shape. Round club masters, panto shapes, and angled rounds are all modern takes on this classic go-to shape. And layered coloring keeps these looks fresh and clean. It's going to be all about the subtle twists to the round, the slight variations, and color. Color today is more important than it's ever been. We've really moved past the browns, the grays, the blacks, and the navies. And, you know, people are having fun with color now in eyewear. The last uh, shape that I want to highlight is the flat top or the D shape, which is a timeless classic for men. The clean masculine shape works for both metal and acetate styles and unique detailing like keyhole bridges and flat front po profiles can make the shape retro or futuristic. Fun. The second trend area that I want to touch on is color as it's become such an important element in frame design. Uh, as West Group decides on the key color trends for each seasonal collection, we look to the Pantone Institute, which is the number one color forecasting uh, company in the world, and various other forecasting services to provide key direction when it comes to color. For 2021, we're seeing a mix of dusty hues and bold brights anchored by a neutral palette that is grounded in nature. You can go to the next slide, please. For spring, summer 2021, hues have been inspired by the artificial intensity and glare of digital life. And on the flip side, inspired by the softened and dusty looks of natural dyes and colors. If you look, if you continue to look at this uh, color palette, where you see colors that, you know, have been around forever. I think the big thing, as I alluded to at the beginning, is you're seeing subtle changes year to year, season to season in tones. So you see different tones of purple. You see red getting darker or lighter or more, more fiery depending on the trends of the season. Blues have become a mainstay, but we're seeing blues mixed with more greens, more purples, aquas, teals, all of these colors, uh, which are core colors and, and the evolution and the subtlety of the changes year to year is what keeps them fresh. Beautiful. So some of the key uh, colors that we're going to be seeing for 2021. Uh, you can go to the next slide, please. Um, this year, Pantone's color of the year was illuminating yellow and ultimate gray. This was the second year that they chose two colors uh, to be the uh, color of the year. The vibrancy of yellow to tones work best as accent colors and will hopefully bring some brightness and optimism back into our daily lives while gray remains a strong neutral hue that is a great core color uh, for both men and women. When we look at the reds for this season, the you can move to the next one, please. Um, this year's uh, key color, red color is called Oxy Fire. 
It's a bit brighter from reds that we saw in 2020. Uh, it's a mix of red and orange, and it's the perfect accent color when combined with a dark neutral tone, or it's great on its own for those uh, daring to make a statement. I think the request for red is probably a request we get every year, both for wow. men and for women. Yeah. So it's it's figuring out how to, to introduce it in a wearable way, because at the end of the day, um, we don't design frames just because we like the look at the end of the day what's so important to us at west group is making sure that we're designing frames that are going to sell through that are going to resonate with consumers that consumers are going to be comfortable wearing um, purple tones are taking on new prominence with dusky hues of lavender lilac and violet looking to replace feminine pinks from past seasons with the variety of purple tones making the spring summer palette, it's the perfect color to achieve a tonal layered look in eyewear, uh, both by mixing uh, materials, whether it's an acetate front and a metal temple, or layering uh, a purple frame with a purple fashion tint sun lens. So tonal looks um, are becoming more and more important in fashion, and we're seeing it uh, transposed onto eyewear as well, and there's so many ways we can do it. So it's pretty exciting to see. Sure is. What a great color. For pink, uh, pink continues to trend into spring, summer 2021, but this season's tone is definitely more dusty than past tones. Uh, the deepening of pink shows a move away from that barely there look of past seasons, you know, the nudes, the blushes, the, you know, you need to see look into a certain light to actually see the tints. Um, well, but it's still maintaining a delicate feminine look. I'm actually happy to see the move away from those barely there um, colors. I love color. And, and you know, two, two years of very light translucent, translucent I, I'm, I was good to move on. Um, <laughs> this is a gorgeous color. That yeah, I, I'm super color. excited. It looks beautiful on skin tones. It's not too light, so you don't look washed out. And you, it's a little bit of that rosiness, uh, which yeah. which I think a lot of women are looking for. So very so wearable. It, it is. It is very very wearable. Um, Aqua and teal are going are another uh, big color for 2021. They've long been popular eyewear colors for those looking for that pop. But we're starting to see uh, aqua, teal, uh, marine blue moving into the mainstream, being more of the highlight rather than the pop, which again is showing um, over time, um, particularly women have become more comfortable in color. Um, and, and really now we're looking at, at eyewear as, as making that fashion statement. Great color. Uh, the, the last color I wanted to talk about um, is brown. Um, while brown was once the staple color for eyewear, over the last couple of years, it sort of lost its uh, popularity, as I said, as, as people were starting to look for more color. And that was for both men and women. It was a given that brown was going to be the number one color. And, and now, very rarely are we seeing that the case. We're, we're looking at 2021 as, as this starting to change. Uh, with natural tones taking hold in fashion and interior design, we're looking to soft browns to pick up favor. Gradients, tonal coloring, and marbling will push brown, sands, and camel hues to the forefront. They're a really nice um, accompaniment to the pinks and the lavenders and that that softer hues. And, and I think, you know, because it was out of fashion for so long, that people are now going to look at brown as a new color because you look at the boards and there's not a lot of brown anymore. So it's nice to see it come back. It, it's a really, again, it's another hue that, that looks great on most skin tones, um, very sellable, and it's going to be up to us um, eyewear designers to make brown exciting again. Well, the fish style you have there on the bottom, what a gorgeous way to interpret brown, you know, into that into the mix there it's it's beautiful yeah it, it's it's i think it comes down to the layering of color um putting together some interesting color combinations and contrast just to create that interest so that brown isn't viewed as 
boring. Right. Okay. The last section um, I want you to talk about is detailing. Um, there are several detailing trends that are shaping eyewear designs um, in 2021. Um, the first one, with so many of us staying close to home and enjoying outdoor activities, consumers began to rediscover the beauty in Mother Nature's landscape. Uh, the uneven lighting in rock formations inspire the marbling looks of acetate. Flowering shapes inspire laser cut designs like we've done on the top row of Fish 3667. And temples are detailed with wood inserts or wood grain finishes. I think um, as consumers, you know, especially with all the lockdowns and, and not traveling and working from home, people are stepping back and taking a breath and looking around and enjoying the outdoors and going for more walks. And, and, and designers are being inspired for that, you know, inspired by that. You look around, there's beauty everywhere. And there's things that, that we can look and get inspiration to create in, in our designs. Um, animal prints. Uh, seems to be a part of every season's trend and spring summer is no different. Uh, joining the present leopard, tigra and snake, snake skin print that seems to pop up every single season. Um, this year, the star is going to be the zebra. Uh, Love the that. <laughs> big bag pattern will be a definite standout this year, whether classic black and white or infused with color. Women love pattern and they're really drawn to fun animal and reptile print. It's a great um, combination with accessories. Uh, they're fun, they're sexy, they're, they have a little bit of a, you know, zzz. It, it just really dresses Definitely. A, a basic tonal look. You put on a, 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 a great uh, animal print and uh, you suddenly get emboldened. Definitely. Love that. Love both of them. So is the top one more of a snake print? No, the, the top one is a leopard print. Oh, it is leopard. So in this okay. model in Fish 3674, uh, each color has its own distinct print. So oh, we played on leopard. Uh, there's one tiger. There's one abstract print that was basically created by um, cross pattern of color. So we try to uh, bring some of organic patterning into uh, the spring summer collection for fish, but uh, we definitely have our fair share of uh, animal snake skin and the bling because women love the bling. Super fun. Um, the last uh, uh, detailing trend is um, cutouts. Uh, taking inspiration from fashion and accessory design, crafted cutouts has become a key trend in eyewear design. We've seen this over the last couple of years, whether, you know, it's crafted cutouts, negative space, um, with all the new technology in frame manufacturing, whether it be laser design, CNC milling, there's so much fine detailing and cutting that we can do just to create some interest. Uh, whether it's intricate and detailed laser work um, that allows us to have seamlessly threaded uh, temples that go through an acetate front like we're seeing with uh, Click 680 or double brow bars that are laser cut from one piece of um, um, monoblock metal, which is like the Fish uh, 3670, uh, peekaboo temples, um, all of these sort of cuts and intricate detailing are elevating today's designs to make them more interesting, um, more fashionable, more accessory-like. Um, because at the end of the day today, um, consumers are really looking at eyewear more and more as a fashion accessory and as an extension of their personal style. Definitely. Great and styles here pretty much um, the trends that I wanted to go over. Um, I hope um, the viewers out there found this helpful um, and um, are going to be looking forward to all the new product um, that's coming out in the industry for 2021. And, and as important, I'm, I'm hoping that we gave you some information that you can use when you're talking with your consumers um, about some of the trends in eyewear um, as they're looking for their own uh, fashion accessory. And such a great selling tool and kind of a just a great, you know, kind of value add tool to be able to share the fashion trends with the customers and the patients as they're looking for eyewear, you know, just to kind of know what's 
what's in tr in vogue in terms Absolutely. of colors and shapes. And yeah, it's a great, great asset um, for the ECPs to have. So thank you for sharing that. And folks, <laughs> thank you all for joining us. And there are so many people here watching. So I'm really excited that everyone, you know, kind of hung in with us there through the te technical difficulties. We appreciate that. And um, what a great presentation between the business side and the fashion side and the product side for West Group. We thank you so much, Bev and Michael, for joining us and sharing all this great information. It's such an inspiring company. Our thank pleasure. You. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And folks, um, stay tuned. We'll have more live streams coming down the pike. So keep uh, tuned into our Facebook page and YouTube channel. And thank you all again. And, and stay safe out there. Thank you, Eric. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you.